So, you press the power button on your phone. The screen goes black, it feels cool in your hand, and you think, okay, it's off, completely disconnected. But what if I told you that it's not? What if a secret part of your phone was still awake and still listening? It seems like a simple question, right? But the answer is, well, it's surprisingly complicated. It actually forces you to question what off even means anymore. We've all been taught that powering down our devices is the ultimate way to protect our privacy, the one surefire way to go completely dark. But the thing is, the technology to get around that has been around for over a decade, and it works by exploiting a fundamental truth about how our phones are actually built. And look, this isn't some wild conspiracy theory. It's a documented capability, part of a very real classified program. What this shows is a fundamental power dynamic we don't often think about. We control the screen, sure, but we don't always control the device itself. Deep inside your phone, a part you can't even see could be just waiting, waiting for a signal to wake up, turn on the mic and report back, all without you having a clue. Okay, so let's get right into it. The tool that makes all this possible has a name that sounds almost kind of silly, but what it does is anything but innocent. It's a classified NSA program tool, and it's called Dreamy Smurf. Its entire job is to remotely control whether your phone is on or off, basically giving an attacker the ultimate master switch. Now, Dreamy Smurf wasn't working alone. Thanks to those incredible documents that Edward Snowden brought to light back in 2014, we got this rare peek into a hidden world of digital surveillance. What they showed was that Dreamy Smurf was just one piece of a way bigger puzzle, a whole collection of surveillance tools they called the Smurf Suite. The names might sound playful, but when you put them all together, they created a complete system for remote surveillance. So when you look at these tools together, you start to see the whole strategy. You've got Nosy Smurf to turn on the mic and listen in. Tracker Smurf to get your exact location in real time. Then you have Dreamy Smurf, the gatekeeper, which could power the phone on just enough to use those other tools, even if you thought it was off. And to top it all off, making it completely invisible, was Paranoid Smurf, which was designed to hide all the other implants and clean up any digital footprints. It was basically a perfect silent surveillance machine. Okay, so this raises the big question. How is any of this even possible? I mean, how can something control your phone when the main operating system, your iOS or your Android, is completely shut down? Well, the answer is hidden in the very architecture of every single smartphone out there. They all have a secret second brain. And this really shows you the split. On one side, you've got the application processor. That's the brain you know and love. It runs your apps, your screen, your camera, everything you see and touch. When you hold that power button and slide to power off, you're turning this processor off. But on the other side is the secret, the baseband processor. This thing is a completely separate computer. It's got its own memory, its own software, and its only job is to manage the phone's connection to the cell network. And here's the kicker. It can stay powered on, listening to the network, even when the main OS is totally asleep. So here's the crucial point. That baseband processor is the real gateway to your device from the outside world. It's always running in the background, completely separate from the operating system you interact with. You can't install an app on it, you can't run a virus scan on it, and on pretty much any phone these days, you can't just pull the battery to shut it off. It's a locked black box that we just have to trust. And that right there, that's the blind spot. The baseband processor was the perfect place to hide an implant like Dreamy Smurf. If you can compromise that hidden, powerful layer, you get control that survives everything, reboots, factory resets, even powering off the phone. You're not just controlling the phone, you're controlling the controller. All right, so let's walk through how this all comes together in an actual attack. Based on what we know from the leaked documents and what security researchers have found since, we can put together the likely steps for a dreamy Smurf style operation. And honestly, it's a shockingly simple and sneaky process. It all starts with targeting a phone's unique ID, like its number. Then, a specially crafted signal. Think of it like a silent, invisible text message that your messaging app never even sees, gets sent over the air. But this message isn't for your main OS. It's sent directly to the baseband processor. If that baseband has a software flaw, that message can trigger it, letting the attacker remotely plant their own code onto it. And from that point on, the baseband is compromised. It's just sitting there, waiting for hidden commands to silently turn on other parts of the phone, all while the screen stays completely black. And that's what's so chilling about this. For you, the user, there's nothing. No notification pops up, there's no log file you can check, no weird battery drain that would tip you off. The whole attack happens on a level of the phone's hardware that's completely invisible to you, and even to your operating system security tools. It really is the definition of a ghost in the machine. 
Now, you might be thinking, okay, but this stuff is a decade old. We've got 5G now, our phones are super advanced. Surely this isn't a problem anymore, right? Well, not exactly. The core idea that made Dreamy Smurf possible isn't just still with us. In some ways, it's even more deeply embedded in our devices than ever before. That brand new 5G phone in your pocket right now, it still has that separate, mysterious baseband processor running code that security researchers can't easily check. It's still a blind spot. And what's more, the number of ways to attack it has actually grown. You've got eSIMs now, which are basically software-based SIM cards managed by that same baseband. And think about features like Apple's Find My Network, which can locate your phone even when it's off. How does that work? It relies on chips that are, by design, always on and always listening. So the name Dreamy Smurf might be old news, but the idea of a firmware-level attack is more real than ever. So this all sounds pretty scary, I know. It can feel like we have no control. But the point of this isn't to make you paranoid, it's to make you aware. You know, understanding the threat is always the first, most important step to protecting yourself. And while you can't just go in and rewrite your phone software, there are real practical things you can do to make yourself a much harder target. First things first, updates. Keep your device updated. I know those system and carrier updates can feel annoying, but they often contain crucial security patches for these exact kinds of low-level problems. Second, limit the ways in. Every radio that's on is a potential open door, so turn off your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when you're not using them. For conversations that are truly, truly sensitive, physical isolation is the only 100% guarantee. A Faraday bag is basically a pouch that blocks all radio signals. And finally, we can push for change. The only reason these systems are so vulnerable is because they're kept so secret. By pressuring manufacturers for more transparency, we can all help build a safer digital world. When it comes right down to it, Dreamy Smurf teaches us a huge lesson about our technology. We get to see this beautiful, simple surface, but the real power and the real risks are buried in these complex, invisible layers underneath. This isn't just about phones, it's about the incredible amount of trust we put in devices we don't fully understand. Wheel control only starts when we begin to understand what's actually happening inside the tech we rely on every single day. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? If a phone that's turned off isn't truly off, what other things do we just assume are true about our technology? What other secrets are hiding in that little slab of glass and metal we carry with us everywhere we go? The conversation about our privacy and security has never, ever been more important. The more we understand, the safer we'll all be. So stay aware. But hey, knowledge is power, right? Now you know exactly how this trap works, you know what the vulnerabilities are, and you have real concrete steps you can take to guard your privacy. Just by watching this, you're already one step ahead of the game.